I've been interviewing mental health experts, psychologists, and psychiatrists for nearly five years, and perhaps the most misunderstood mental health condition is obsessive compulsive disorder, in my opinion. Here to clear that up and also answer the question, when is it anxiety and when is it actually OCD, is the OCD expert herself, Dr. Jenny Yip. Dr. Yip, welcome back to Med Circle. Thank you for having me. What are some, some of the misconceptions surrounding OCD? There are many misconceptions. I think one of the misconception is that, you know, someone is just doing OCD behaviors because they're quirky and because uh, it's a personality and that it's easy to change. Just get a hold of it. Yeah, those are all very common. I hear the phrase, that's so OCD, I'm so OCD, you're so OCD all the time. I politely correct them or I don't correct them. I actually say, oh, you're really living with OCD. And they say, no, not really. And then I go, okay, well, yeah, that's very different. It's no laughing matter and people don't really understand the nightmare that a person experiences mentally when they are truly suffering from OCD. It's not a preference for color or organization. Yes. It's a re irresistible urge to engage in those repetitive behaviors. Well said. And it is important to note that Dr. Yep is not just an expert on the topic, but she is also living with OCD herself. And so she can speak from both of those uh, experiences. Is it more common, though, than people realize, Dr. Yip? Oh, absolutely. I think it is more common because, number one, many people don't realize they have OCD. The truth is that it takes a person about 14 to 17 years to access uh, effective treatment when they have OCD. So that is a lot of time. So there is a, a understatement when it comes to people who suffer from OCD because there's not a lot of information out there or actually there's not a lot of accurate information out there and um, people who are the sufferers feel stigma you know they feel shame they feel embarrassed and therefore they wouldn't acknowledge and uh, come forth with that information to most people especially when they don't believe there's effective help out there certainly and that fear is also also carries right into the workplace w only one in four people will actually disclose their anxiety disorder at work and about 38% of people said that they would feel their boss would think that they're coming up with an excuse with anxiety or OCD instead of just buckling down to do their work. What are your thoughts? You know, here's the truth. That is definitely a very low number. I know there are definitely a lot more people who experience anxiety overall, not just in the workplace. So I would challenge those numbers. However, I do want to be able to distinguish uh, anxiety that can occur from anything uh, from OCD because OCD is very, very specific. And even though anxiety is a part of OCD, a person with OCD also has, has these compulsive behaviors that are triggered from their anxiety um, to do things in a repetitive way, in a compulsive way. And they do those activities, those behaviors, in order to prevent something bad from happening, in order to reduce the consequence. So not only does a person have the interest of thoughts of, you know, catastrophes occurring, like most people with anxiety disorder, they also have the behavioral, the compulsive piece that a lot of people mm. with anxiety disorder may or may not have. How common is it that someone would only experience the compulsions, or excuse me, would only experience the obsessions, but not the compulsions? It's not common, and I think this is a misnomer. There's a term out there that's called pure O, which stands for pure yes. obsessional, except what a lot of people who are not experts in the field 
don't realize is that a person with pure obsessionals also has compulsions. Only difference is that the compulsions occur mentally, not physically. And just because you don't see it doesn't mean that it's not occurring. And a lot of the mental compulsions could be things like mentally checking, mentally seeking reassurance, mentally trying to intellectualize, rationalize, all in the service of getting at certainty because OCD and anxiety thrives on doubt. And the purpose of these mental compulsions is to get absolute truth. And I don't know if there's any absolute truth except for death and taxes, according to Benjamin Franklin. Well, certainly there are many signs that anxiety could be symptoms of OCD, but I want to walk through some of your choices on when anxiety gets confused for OCD and vice versa. Well, in the workplace, I think a lot of times people will say that they're very anxious um, about work and they're constantly thinking about work and they're constantly getting these intrusive thoughts of potential threats and harm and horrific consequences because of work. And if you have those intrusive ruminations about work and all of the catastrophes that can occur with work, that could also be OCD depending on what you do with the thoughts. If you're constantly checking your work, um, checking if you are doing well, checking with your colleagues, checking with um, your supervisors, checking your emails, checking <laughs> your phones, um, getting your the, the purpose is to check to get reassurance that no catastrophes are going to occur. And that could be a sign of OCD and not just anxiety. That's, that's one of a few. So if I'm understanding that correctly, the obsession would be, oh my gosh, something disastrous is gonna happen. And the compulsion would be, I need to double check, triple check everything so this disaster does not happen in, at work. Exactly. So you're checking and checking and checking and checking. And the yeah, purpose sense. is to make sure that everything is just right and you're not failing and no one's going to get angry at you and you're not going to get fired and all of those negative consequences that could occur for a person with intrusive uh, thoughts of potential harm occurring at the workplace. What about another sign? Perfectionism is very common. People with perfectionism often would actually procrastinate and avoid tasks. I know this is like so counterintuitive that a lot of people in the workplace might think a person who um, doesn't do their job is a lazy person or is, um, is not a committed person. However, there are many people out there who actually suffer from perfectionism and end up avoiding the task and end up procrastinating because they want to make sure that they do everything perfectly. And to do everything perfectly takes an enormous amount of effort and attention and detail and meticulousness. And even then, you can't guarantee perfection. In fact, even striving for perfection is unrealistic to begin with. So people who tend to avoid tasks, who procrastinate, take a long time to get to task, um, perhaps they're actually perfectionists and therefore they're not getting things done as efficiently as another team member. What about this idea of ruminating as a sign of obsessive compulsive disorder? So whenever we're ruminating, we're getting intrusive thoughts of mm -hmm. something bad happening, right? Mm -hmm. And one uh, consequence of intrusive rumination might be someone who is rewriting or uh, rereading. Um, so for example, uh, how many times have you gotten an email and you're rereading it and rereading it and rereading it 
to make sure that you got it just right. Or you're writing an email and you're rereading oh, yeah. it before you resend it or before you oh, reply, yeah. right? Or even worse, you're typing up an email and you're deleting and retyping and deleting and retyping so that you can get the words just right, just perfect. And when you're doing that, again, it's all in service of ensuring that nothing bad will happen, right? That mm. you won't be judged uh, negatively, that um, you'll be seen in a, in a positive light, that the words that you're sending out really mean exactly what you intended it to mean, or, you know, that you might sound a certain way. So people might be rechecking, rewriting, rereading, avoiding, procrastinating out of perfectionism because they want to prevent some catastrophic work consequence from occurring. And these are really signs of OCD and not just anxiety. Yeah, really well said as always, Dr. Yip. If it's not too intrusive of a question, I would love to ask how you are doing with uh, your OCD monster as you so uh, refer to it as uh, occasionally. Yeah, well, I mean, I always have to keep it in check. I think by making sure that I am able to be aware of triggers in my life and when, and it doesn't mean that I don't ever have an intrusive thought. And it also doesn't mean that I don't ever engage in a compulsive behavior. I think setting that as an expectation is unrealistic and it's actually a setup for failure. However, being honest with yourself that we all get intrusive thoughts, not just a person with OCD. However, we all get intrusive thoughts, right? And just because we get intrusive thoughts, that doesn't necessarily mean that you will backslide or you'll fall off your wagon or relapse. It just means notice your intrusive thoughts. And then if you're also aware that you're engaging in specific compulsions, then use the tools that you have already learned in therapy, and I hope you're going to therapy or you've been in therapy, and through the exposures that you have previously done, perhaps it's time to repeat them because here's the thing. If you are not practicing the skills that you have acquired, then you will likely lose them. And like any muscle in your body, your brain is no different. And if you continue to flex those brain muscles, then you'll be able to get stronger and more resilient to those horrific OCD monster thoughts. Dr. Yip, the way you explain it is so fabulous. Thank you for being here and thank you for sharing as well. I'm Kyle Kittleson. Remember, whatever you're going through, you got this. Mm -hmm.